Uh, hello everyone and welcome back to NL582 Modeling and Control of Electric Machines and Drives um, Last time we had a summary about the theory of operation of DC machines in both motor mode and generator mode and we started talking about AC machines uh, We said that the AC machines we'd be just dealing with would be mainly the synchronous machine in its generator mode most of the time and the induction machine in its motoring mode and we started talking about the synchronous machine last time by started talking about the construction of the machine. And we said that um, the uh, stator of this machine, because just like any rotating machine, it has a stationary part called the stator. The stator here is carrying carries the armature winding. That's why the stator of this machine is the armature, okay? So when we're talking about synchronous machine, and I will tell you, we're now dealing with the armature winding. You translate this into your mind directly to be the stator winding, not the rotor winding like DC machines, okay? The other one is the um, rotor member, the rotating part of the machine, and that's what I started talking about last time. And we said that in the synchronous machine, this guy carries the field winding. That's why it is the field member. So when I'm just talking to you about the field winding and synchronous machine, you translate this directly to be the rotor winding. And we said that last time that in synchronous machine, we have two different types of rotors, okay? The cylindrical rotor and the salient pool rotor okay and we start talking last time about both of them so um, maybe let me just grab you again um, good 3d um, picture of what we are trying to get from this guy here sorry um, is there a specific one yeah this one okay and this photo here is the salient pool rotor okay it is just like we said last time it is just the poles here are just have a salient form so it was looking like this if this is your rotor of the machine so it has just a salient pool like this and it has also a face they're both made of iron or steel okay so those are your um, poles okay so these are iron pieces and we just adding coils to them like this and these coils are fed by voltage to produce um, magnetic field so if you apply voltage to these coils they will act like electromagnets and will just produce um, magnetic field and that's your source of magnetic field you're searching for okay and it will just if this north this one will be south and this is north and the other one is south and we talked about the pros and cons of each type of these rotors of the salient pole and the cylindrical pole last time um, okay guys and um, talking about this that's the whole point so all of these winding is just they are connected together in series so this one goes here and this one goes there and this one goes here and this one goes there okay so they are all connected together in series but you will have from here or from any point just sorry um, two terminals going outside and you just apply DC volt here so keep that in mind we'll be talking about this as field winding are supplied from DC source to create magnetic field okay so you're asking me we are talking about synchronous machine as an AC machine but you're saying it's fed from a DC source keep it in mind I'm talking about the field winding not the armature winding so the field winding you want to create magnetic field okay you can create magnetic field from a DC source or from an AC source it doesn't matter you want just electricity electric current to move into the wires to create magnetic fields okay
So if you're using a DC source, this North Pole and South Pole will na not change polarity or change magnitude. So these poles will continue to give constant value of magnetic field all the time and constant polarity. The North will still North, the South will still not South, okay? And its magnitude will keep constant. If you apply AC voltage to them, no, this North and South Pole will change polarity because sometimes the voltage is positive, sometimes it's negative, and it will change magnitude because the sinusoidal waves just change the magnitude of time and we don't like both of them. The theory of operation of the synchronous machine needs these poles to be um, just um, the same value and the same polarity all the time like <coughs> we will just discuss in a bit. So for this machine to work we need the field winding to be fed from a DC source not an AC source. But remember that's just to create magnetic field which is the medium for energy conversion inside this kind of a machine. Okay, so it's not how we describe it an AC machine. We will describe it an AC machine because the voltage will be induced in the armature, which is the stator coil, will be AC like will be just derived in a minute. Okay, but for now, we are supplying the field winding by a DC source. That's why I'm saying we're just connecting all the coils together in series and just have two terminals of them to apply it to a DC source. Okay, guys? And how we apply this actually? That is like we said before. If you are trying to push electricity to a rotating part like this, you need those guys. Okay, those we call them slip rings. Okay, so you remember the uh, split ring commutator in DC machines? The split ring commutator was in DC machine, it was um, a cylinder, but it's cut in pieces, if you remember this insulated from each other and that's how we use it to convert from DC to AC and uh, and the DC machine okay but for here we don't want it to be just cut it's um, a slip ring it's just a cylinder of copper that is just does not have pieces it's all one piece one cylinder okay and this is brushes you have two brushes one for the positive and one for the negative okay and you just use those brushes and attach them to a dc source battery dc source like this okay so from here the current goes from the dc source that is current going to this one okay um i'm doing this to make it more obvious for you because that's positive and negative, let me change polarities of this guy. I don't want to confuse you guys. So, these brushes we are talking about. So, these are brushes. Okay. And that's the whole point we're talking about here. That's a positive and negative brush. And so, we will be just attaching those two brushes so it's just doesn't look like two because but there are two brushes so this one here comes to this and there's another one here that's the negative one so that is a DC source like this DC source I like this the current will moving in this direction will go into this brush and then go into this one this slip ring okay and the slip ring is just connected to the coils like this so the current will move from this brush to the slip ring which is attached to the shaft. So the slip rings are just fixed to the shaft, rotating with it, but it's just um, fixed on the shaft itself. While the brushes are fixed, that does not rotate. It's how you just transmit the current from a source which is fixed stationary by definition to the coils of the rotor which should be rotating all the time. So use a brush that's just pressed down over these rotating slip rings and then these slip rings has just a connection to the coils and the other slip ring which is the negative one will be connected to the other terminal of the coil and that's how you connecting DC voltage to these kind of coils okay guys so the slip rings not splitted like DC machine 
because we're not concerned here to transform DC voltage to AC voltage or all that stuff we've been doing in DC machine okay we just wanna apply DC voltage to these coils and that's it okay guys so if you remember on DC machines we were trying to transform from the DC voltage coming from outside to AC form inside the machine to keep the torque of the machine which is acting like a motor a unidirectional not bidirectional revise your DC machines um, lectures please okay and for a DC generator it was generating AC voltage inside the machine by wanting DC outside so we we're splitting the commutator to act like um, a modern day's um, AC to DC rectifier but now we don't want to do this we just want to apply DC voltage to the coils we don't want to make it bidirectional or something we need it to keep unidirectional because we want the north pole and south pole to keep north and south all the time okay guys so that was the selenium pool one we've been talking about last time um, for the cylindrical one um, let me grab as close as I can for a picture here okay so actually this one is not um, really for this but it's very very close okay so that is the cylindrical type as we said last time okay and this way we have this to be the um, iron core of the rotor so that is the rotor again this is the shaft okay and these are the field winding okay but like you said, it's buried inside slots here. So you're operating slots here like this, this, this. Slots inside the cylinder and placing the coil in it. Okay. Like that, you having something like this. So it is the rotor cylinder like that. But we are just opening slots inside it. So we are opening slots inside it like this. Okay. Um, it's of course like this. So let me keep it. So yeah, we are opening slots inside it. And you place the coils inside these slots. So it's made from one piece. And that is the whole point of it. Okay, guys. So we are just having here coil of this. Um, so this is, will be North Pole. And then we'll have in another one here that is like South Pole and again so this ones are just um, north poles and another those will be just south poles and so on and so forth okay so that's why we call it a cylindrical form because it's just like a good cylinder shape from outside like this here and we talked about the pros and cons of each one of those again it is the same thing here you're having um, two um, slip rings here one positive slip ring and one negative slip ring. I know it looks like three, but um, consider to be two again. <laughs> okay, so they just two. And those are the brushes here. Also two brushes, one for the positive and one for the negative. Okay, guys. And yeah, so you're also just connecting the um, uh, the DC source to these brushes like this that is the positive terminal and that is the negative terminal connecting here and connecting there and the current just move from the brushes into the slip rings here and from it to the winding of the machine to supply it with DC voltage to create the magnetic field okay so both of them are producing new magnetic field north and south poles all the time and they are just fixed not fixed in position because they rotate with the router obviously but they are just keep its value and keeps its polarity of the magnetic field all the time the north pole keeps north pole and the south pole keeps south pole okay uh, the difference between them is design wise and engineering wise like we said last time so the selenium pool used with low speeds because it's not as rigid mechanically but the cylindrical used can be used with very high speeds because it's mechanically rigid because it's just made of one piece like you said like you see here okay but that means it's more complex and that means more money and more time while the selling pool much more simpler to assemble because you're basically assemble each pool on its own and then join them together and that's much simple in terms of money 
and time. But like I said, each one is good for its own application. Okay, guys? So that was the router of this machine, how it's constructed and how it's working. Okay? Um, good. But what about the stator? So, jumping to talk about the construction of the stator, which is here the armature of the machine. Okay, guys? So for this kind of machines, the stator will look like a um, nice photo like mm. this one, okay? Okay guys, so that is the stator of the um, synchronous machine, okay? So this blue part is the... Um, this blue part here is the outer frame. So it's just a frame for the machine to hold it all in one piece. Okay, guys. And um, by the way, for you to know these guys, so you have just um, these traces here is just to direct the air ducts to move into outside the machine like that for better cooling, air for cooling. To cool down the machine because, you know, because all the losses we have inside the machine, the copper losses and the mechanical losses and all kind of losses, we have thermal effects. So we have, so the machine gets hot while it's working. So all the time we try to make the case of the machine, we just made passes into it like that to just direct the air to just try to touch the surface of the outside of the machine to cool it. Okay. So that's the outer frame of the stator. And inside here, you have the stator core itself. So this here is the stator core, which is, like I said, made of iron or steel. Because they're magnetic materials, which is a magnetic field like so possible. Okay, guys? And we make slots into this. So this hole you're seeing here, the slot, where you place your winding inside them. And between those two slots, so that is a slot and that is a slot, and this iron piece, we call it the tooth. Okay, so we place the winding inside the slots. Okay, guys. So where the winding, like we talking about, so the winding will be placed just like this. Okay, so it is the same photo here, but after adding the coils okay guys so those are coils those um sorry these are the coils the winding of you placing them inside these slots like you can see here seeing here guys so these Winding are going inside the slots like this and just completing its way outside from here to be connected to each other Okay, guys Sounds good and for this particular kind of a machine the stator holds The armature winding which is three phase winding. What I mean by three phase winding? Three phase winding is just, they are three sets of winding identical but separated by 100 degrees in space. So you will find this and this, the red ones, to be winding A and then having this and this to be winding B and this and this to be winding C okay so for three phase winding that means we have three sets of perfectly identical winding but have 100 degree 
sorry having 120 degree shift in space remember your three phase the very first lecture or the second we just try to review our information about three phase the winding and I told you because we will be just dealing with them so much and here here it comes okay so you have three different so three have three um, sets of winding like this so if I try to make it more visible for you guys so it's a three phase model like this okay so that is the stator here we can see that it's stator winding and here the stator winding inside you see these um, coils the red ones are just phase A, the blue ones phase B, and the yellow ones in phase C. They are just so identical as you see here, but they are just 120 degrees shifted in space, like what you can see here. Okay, so each phase winding are connected in series, but they are not connected to the other phases. So they are separate three phase sets of winding. They are not connected together. Each phase is connected together. So phase A, which is the red ones here, are connected together. Phase B, which is the blue ones, connected together. Phase C, the, th the yellow ones are connected together. But the three phases are not connected together. So you will have um, six terminals coming out because you have three uh, winding, three different winding. Each one of them has two terminals to connect them to the outside world. So you will have six terminals here because that's the three phase machine, guys. Okay, so that's how this is constructed like that okay like we s we are saying here so it is these uh, things to keep in mind all the time um, by the way the um, idea of tooth and winding so the tooth and slots and those stuff to make it more obvious I don't know maybe you don't see it well so if this is the stator core okay then we are just making slots inside it like this okay to place the winding inside okay so we are placing our coils inside it like here that's coil that's coil and then you jump to the kitten something like that okay guys so the place you're placing the coil inside we call this gap here inside is or uh, yeah we call this a slot and this iron piece here we call it tooth okay so the tooth is the iron part that's separating two slots okay guys nice so if we want to just draw it just schematic diagram something like that for this winding i will have the stator like um, a cylinder something like that and you will have the winding just distributed like this so this is just winding of phase a okay um, let me try make it symmetric as possible so that is phase a going from here and coming from there Um, by the way, these notations, when I say cross, that means going into the page. When I say dot, that means coming out of the page. Okay, and that's how it's, it's just going. So the winding are just going from this position, these positions, and coming back from here okay and that is phase a sometimes we call this a dash something like that and it is the same way we are placing uh, the other phases so for phase b it will start here okay it will be identical so here are the crosses of phase b okay and coming back here here are the dotted here okay so that is phase b and that is dash okay guys and here it will be C here are the crosses of phase C and the coils will come back or wires will coming back from here and that is phase C dash okay if you lock in here guys so it is the crosses of phase A 
between it and between the starting phase B with the crosses of it, which where the wires start going into the page, this will be 120 degrees. And that's why I'm saying those phases are 120 degrees have phase shift in space. The same idea between the blue one, the B to the center of C like this here, the crosses ones, this one will be 120 degrees, this will be 120 degrees. And that's why, and that's how you have three phase sets of windings, so there is three sets of identical winding with 100 degree phase shift. That's what we call balanced three phase winding. Okay, guys, so those are your armature winding. Okay, and for the generator mode, which is the mode we'll be talking about all the time, as we said, the synchronous machine were more concerned with the uh, generator mode of it. Okay, so for the generator mode, this winding will be where the induced voltage will happen. And that's where you are generating voltage to uh, just take it outside to the electrical loads to just generate electricity and push it to the grid. Okay, guys? So that's how everything is working now. Okay? You're just placing the router inside the stator like um, this photo here. Just again to make sure you have everything in mind. Okay, guys? So that is a complete lock of the machine. Okay, that is your stator. Okay, and that is your rotor, which is still in power for now, but it can be cylindrical. And this is the shaft. And the rotor is just going inside the stator like this. And while you are rotating the rotor, you are now in business. Okay, so we are just applying or just attaching a turbine here to the shaft. So the turbine looks like a big fan. And if you apply force to this fan, it will start spinning like this. So you have speed. So this rotor will just rotate inside the stator when you just push inside, obviously, okay? Okay, so that's the whole point of this. So if we start talking about the theory of operation, was emphasis on the generator mode because like we said that is the more we concerned was in synchronous machine okay so we apply external force to rotate the router the router carrying field winding fed by the C source and this creating magnetic pulls okay so what happens is the armature or stator like we said here winding will be cut cut it by the moving magnetic field coming from the router then induced voltage will be generated and the armature or stator winding okay and because armature winding are three phase the voltage 
will be AC three phase voltage. How this happens? Let's see. So the basic idea is you just apply DC voltage from the um, outside DC source to these rotor coils to create magnetic field and then apply external source to rotate this rotor carrying these coils inside the stator and then the magnetic field coming from these poles will cut the coils and the stator and this will create magnetic field and this sorry will create an induced voltage on it and that's the voltage we are trying to generate from this kind of a generator okay guys how this voltage will be really happen let us have a very very simplified version of this machine okay so this like this so that's your stator and I will be locking directly just on one coil like this that's from phase A okay let me make it like that so that will be phase A and that's phase A dash that means it's just it's the same coil but it's going from here from the cross coming out from here from the dot okay guys and um, obviously you'll be having the other ones just like here that is will be number just B um, like this so B will be here and that is B dash and um, C will be just here and that is C dash but I'm not concerned with B or C now just lock of me straight ahead at the A okay uh, so that is the stator outside here so this is the stator like this and I'm placing the rotor inside here and I will just consider the rotor is just two poles okay so that means this rotor is just having two poles that is a north pole so that is all the north pole and that is a south pole okay and remember this guy is just rotating okay guys so um, this guy is rotating and I'll say that is rotating anti-clockwise like that okay what I'm gonna see here is let's plot the induced voltage in coil A with the rotation and position here was position okay like what we used to do before DC machines I will doing the same here so here's this position and position one it will lock in like this that is the coils of a which is not going anywhere because that is stationary okay and the um, router is just locking like this here the north pole and here the south pole okay guys from this you are having magnetic field cutting this guys okay so for this the magnetic field sorry let me make it red magnetic field will go on from here and you have a magnetic field come back from here at the south they are cutting these coil sides creating an induced voltage in it just like what we said before in DC machines okay it has a certain polarity like this so if I make this called position 1 so I will just have a voltage here like this so at position 1 I will have a certain voltage from induced on this coil okay I will be you will understand what's happening when we just go to the other positions so that is still a and that is a dash because not rotating but the one that's rotating is the router while it's going anti-clockwise like this you will have now the north pole here and the south pole here and obviously the magnetic field coming from them is not cutting your coil at all and that means the voltage will be just coming down to be zero okay guys that is position two so I'm calling this position two let's keep going again that is our a and that is our a dash but now the north pole is down and the south pole is up because again we are rotating uh, anti-clockwise okay so 
you're now having magnetic field crossing from here but look now the cross of the position one or this cross of the A, the beginning of the coil A is facing a north pole and A dash is facing a south pole but now it is the other way around because it's rotated now the south pole is facing um, A and the north pole is facing A dash and that's why we're having the same voltage in position one but it will be just in the um, opposite polarity okay so this will be negative but going down here yeah so it will be just the same thing in position one but it will be negative rather than positive this is what's positive this is negative okay guys let's keep doing this that is a and that is a dash while we keep rotating like this now we'll having the north here and the right and the south here on the left again they are not crossing your coil at all and that's why we are coming back to zero again no voltage will be induced like this so here's position number four zero voltage okay guys if we keep rotating again that is a and that is a dash okay so you're coming back to the north on top and the south and bottom it is the same like position one so position five it is the same like position one and that means you are having a positive voltage again so that is position number five seeing this guys that's what i'm saying so from this the induced voltage in your coil will be like like this which is an a sinusoidal wave it's a cosine wave actually but yeah it's just a matter of where did you start rotating okay so it's just a cosine wave like i said here and that's why i'm saying that's an ac machine that's an ac cosine or sinusoidal wave okay guys so that's how actually the machine works you just apply an external force to force this rotor which carries the magnetic poles to rotate and while it rotates well the magnetic field coming from this will cut your coils and it will induce an AC voltage inside them like you see in here okay guys if you plot the same things but for the other two phases B and C using the same same idea because like you see in here these coils are just having 100 degrees space shift in space it will have the same same sinusoidal wave like this but it will have just a phase shift like this so this is ea and i'll make eb and build and ec and red whatever it is um so they are different yeah um you got the idea so if A or just like and like this, like we derive it, B will just lock the same, but it will have a um, phase difference by 120 degrees. Okay, guys, so it will be locking like this. Not exactly, but yeah, you got the idea. So, and this will be just C. Okay, so it is three phase. Why? Because the corresponding winding of them are just 120 degrees phase shifted in a space. And if you drive the voltage, will be seen by the other guys just like what we did here. It will be just looking like a three phase. Okay. Uh, that's an animation from Dr. Knight's online material. You can just check it around and play with it. I did the same thing here. If you just plot in this, you'll see what I mean by this. Okay. So that is the magnetic field pulls the red and blue are the north pole and south pole rotating and they crossing this coil and you'll see that it's just alternating like this. That's AC. Okay, guys. Okay. 
I think the same same idea. So now we understand how this is generating voltage and why it's AC and why it's three phase. By placing them three phase winding, separating the space by 120 degrees, we are creating three typical voltage waveforms like this, but it will have also 120 degrees phase shift in time. Okay, so placing three phase winding physically separated by 100 degrees in space will give us three phase induced voltages with 100 degrees shift in time okay guys so this was just drawn with time so it's not a typical way of three phases winding how to just give them but you got the idea you can just have them from your old photos i get you from for the three phase winding just like that Okay, so it will be just looking like this. Okay, but we seeing this it's not the same like we um, did. So for here, I think like, sorry. here again no, I had a time stamp sorry so for this here it will be just looking three phase perfect three phase like this okay but yeah don't mention the um, phase um, ordering because we just have different phase orders here but they will look like these ones perfectly three phase voltages outside of this just by placing these winding separated by three phases by 120 degrees in space okay guys that's good uh, let's try to quantify these voltages okay guys so to quantify this voltage we'll just go in back again to the um, the same thing like we said before so the induced voltage in one conductor can be found from Faraday's law so E conductor will be equaling BLV remember but here because it's sinusoidal it will be sine omega MT where omega M is your mechanical speed okay the induced voltage here, like this here, that's induced voltage here, will be looking like a sinusoidal wave or cosine wave, whatever it is. The sine or cosine are the same thing, but they have just 90 degree phase shift, okay? So, this is a cosine wave or sine wave, so we have it like this. It's BLV sine omega MT, okay? So, from this, if you want to get the voltage for a whole turn, which is two conductors, right? You know, the turn has two conductors. So you just multiply this by 2, 2 BLV sine omega MT. Okay, guys. And this will equal 2 BL rather than V, it will be omega MR, like I said, like we did before. V is just the uh, linear speed in meter per second, but we don't like linear speeds. We are trying to go with the rotational speed. So V equals omega m r okay so we substitute for v to be omega m r sine omega m t okay that is the e for one turn but if you want the e for a whole phase e phase 
the induced power voltage pair phase remember we have three separate phase winding they are not just one winding they're all the coils connected together now they have separate three phase winding so we're concerned about the induced voltage of each phase of them okay guys so we will multiply this by the n phase so that is n phase or n phase is the number of turns per phase p l omega m r sine omega m t okay let me just remind you of a thing here so n phase is the number of turners per phase so you see your phase have one how many turns of the coils of this specific phase what is phase a or phase b or phase c okay so that will be like this the b is the flux density and tesla flux density l is the length of conductor in meter and by the way it is also the length of the machine itself because just the conductor is dead long along the machine okay omega m is the rotational angular speed in radian per seconds and if you remember it equals 2 pi over 60 times the rpm speed okay r is the um, radius of um, stator the inner radius of stator in meters okay guys so if you look like here all of those will be just the magnitude of the phase voltage because it's just a sinusoidal wave so it has a magnitude so this magnitude sine omega t will just give you the um, representation of this induced emf okay guys so this one or for phase a like we said before okay because we have three phases phase b so the induced voltage of phase b will equal the same magnitude e phase magnitude here but sine omega mt minus 2 pi over 3 because they are identical they'll have the same magnitude but they have just 120 or 2 pi over 3 phase shift and e phase c will be just also the same magnitude a phase magnitude sine omega mt plus 2 pi over 3 it also have the same magnitude but also 120 degrees phase shifted okay guys if you want to find the e which is the rms value because now we're talking about ac quantities it will be e phase magnitude divided by square root of two this will equal 2 over square root of 2 n phase b l r omega m because that is the magnitude here 2 n phase b l omega m r okay that is a voltage the r mass voltage measured in volts okay guys again 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 don't take that is the b flux density and that is omega m and everything else constant these are dimensions r l n phase and this they are all constant okay so this equal some constant multiply by phi which is the flux by omega m that is e rms remember did the same idea before in dc machines ea was k phi omega m okay so we are dealing with the same principles guys yeah math will be changing but did the same principle so this constant value is different from the constant value in dc machine it's another constant here but it is still holds the same same principle okay guys so if you want to increase 
the induced voltage out of the machine to increase the induced voltage or that you know the generated voltage out of your generator okay if you want to increase it from this equation here we increased the magnetic flux and or speed so you increase the speed of rotation coming from outside or you increase the magnetic flux or you increase both of them if you want to increase the magnetic field coming out of your generator. A final tip here, if you're talking about a generator in the public grid, these winding, three phase winding are connected directly to the public grid. And the public grid has to be working all the time at fixed voltage and frequency. So. We are not playing with the voltage. We are trying to keep it constant. And we'll be talking about this in much, much detail later. But to keep that in mind, as a power system engineer, all your concern is to keep this generator generating constant voltage in terms of magnitude and frequency all the time while you are connected to the public grid. I hope you're now enjoying the idea of understanding what's happening inside a synchronous generator and it's not a black box anymore. Now you understand how we are actually generating electricity in the public grid. This is a synchron generator used in our or almost all our generating stations. This is how you get electricity. You have three phase winding in the stator and you have a rotor hole in the magnetic field winding. You push DC voltage to the rotor to create the magnetic field and you apply external force to rotate this rotor inside the winding. And as these winding are just three phase distributed in the stator, the induced voltage in them will be three phase AC. And that is you get this voltage and just push it to the electric grid and that's it. We have generated electricity going to our grids. That's what I said to you at the very beginning of the course. We are trying here to unlock the black boxes and understand what's happening, how these generators actually work and how we get electricity transmitting to our homes, our factories and all of our applications okay guys that's very important take time to revise this study this well and i will be very happy to answer your questions whether you have them okay we'll just keep going with this next time and we'll talk about modeling of this machine how to model it like we did before with dc machine and just predict its performance via this modeling and the equation that governs its operation Okay, thanks so much for joining me today guys and I hope to see you next time.